live. Hey, we got it. We are. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Yay. Mm -hmm. I, I've got um, some puds ears on because I couldn't find a party hat. They're lovely. And um, we've got lovely Debbie Short who's got her Google Plus party hat on. Yeah. Okay. And the wonderful Angus with his uh, cat in the hat hat on. <laughs> Can everybody hear me okay? We're having a little bit of difficulty with my sound there for a second, so I just want to check that we're okay. Yeah. I can see... Um, hello to Mark Humphreys, David. Uh, Ron West, nice to have you here. Who else have we got? Luke? Is Mark asking naughty questions already? Yeah, he's saying about us being decent again, you know. Oh. <laughs> we have got, we've, well, got an, we've got an 18 plus, it says this hangout is only available to people over the age of 18, so <laughs> we are censored already and it's not even <laughs> up to the watershed. You can say that. I'm, I'm, it's sneakily down the bottom left hand corner of the screen. I have not seen that before. <laughs> it must be you, Debbie. Well, yes. Yeah. They must have. Yeah, they must have realised. <laughs> So we'll just wait for a few more people to come into the group. We've got, let me have a look who we've got here. We've got Adrian. Hiva is here. Nice to see you, Adrian. Uh, Emmy. Andy Lockhart. David oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, mm. Rene. Yeah. Heather. Nice to see you. Liz Johnston. Love to see you, David. And I know Donna's with you as well. So hi to Donna and David. Yeah, they're on separate computers at their house, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Um, Willie Robertson, okay, that's lovely. So if I come back to the main screen. So is everybody ready for 2014? I thought it was a good time to do a kickstart in your blog webinar so we can all start on the, uh, the right foot and get things going. Um, I've got a presentation for you, so I'm going to pull that up on the screen if I can remember how to do the... Ooh. It's on this side, isn't it? This oh, very posh. <laughs> This might be where it all falls to pieces. Right. I'm just going to the alcohol, but I'm just having coffee. Alcohol? <laughs> well, it is New Year. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you. No, I'm having coffee in my world's best teacher mug. Ah. <laughs> when do you go back to school, Angus? Monday. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Is everybody okay and in the chat room? Yeah, and if people click on your name at the bottom, it will keep your screen up there. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, this is the six hours to blogging success. We're going to say something, then, Debbie. I was just going to say, if you do it, Beth, if you put a little blue box around your name as the controller, it will stay there. And even when, when Angus does his... About? Yeah, because yeah, Angus does his heavy breathing, you see, in it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a blue box around me, so that should be okay. That's it. That's it now. So. I've got a blue box around me. So we should be good. Right, let's get crack a then. Okay, so first of all... Um, now we can only see your face. What did you do? Oh, no. <laughs> I think we're a bit rusty. Yeah. We've had a couple of weeks off. Screen yeah. share, right. Screen share. Full screen. Do apologise, people. Can, is it screen sharing? Mm, yeah. Yes. Uh, sort of. Angus, you can't breathe. Because it keeps coming back to you. Well, you mute. If you mute. Angus, do you want to just mute yourself until you want to come in and talk? Yeah. Thank you. Are we ready to go? <laughs> <laughs> Every day at talk. If he jumps about, that's fine. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Um, okay, so, first of all, why? I just wanted to ask the question, and it sounds like a really stupid question, but why are people... Blogging. What are you blogging for? What What is your purpose when you when you writing your content? What are you trying to do? So, if you want to put some words in the chat box, or Debbie, if you want to say anything, if you can speak without the <laughs> screen moving. Oh, I've put my little blue box around it so that 
my screen won't move, but I don't know. Okay. Is it moving? Angus, is it coming back on with me? No, it's just good to have you now. Super. It's right. just good back now. Right, okay. Okay. Um, I can't see the chat, so what was the question? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we were on the board. Why, why do people blog? Why do yeah, people why blog? are you blogging right now? Why, no, why are you personally, no, why, each of the people on here right now, why are you blogging? What are you trying to do? Stupid question. I'll answer it while Super we're waiting. Okay. I'm blogging, I'm blogging to communicate with other people and hopefully help them and provide value to them. Cool. Right, we've got chat Heather, Cameron to create leads. Great. Ron to get known by more people who want his help. Adrian to give value. And Mark Comfrey Davis to provide solutions or answers. Excellent stuff. Because those are all really good answers. Because, and me included in this in this box, a year, few years ago when I started blogging, although I, I liked blogging and I liked writing, I didn't know what the end goal was. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we, we just create content and put it out there. And a lot of people will do it because they're wanting to make money. You know, they'll be completely honest and say, I want to make more money online. And they don't see the bigger picture. They don't think about building relationships and engaging with people, providing value, growing that circle of influence. I just wanted to see where people were right now because you can create a blog post and what is your end goal? What are you actually trying to do? Yeah, we've also got David to engage with others in his niche. Um, other David to learn. Andy Locker to provide value, generate engagement. Liz Johnson's got no sound, but I'm going to tell her to refresh. Andy to find somebody to talk to him. Cool. So, these are my six R's. I'm going to say right straight off the bat, these are my six R's to blogging success. Now I could have kind of done the kind of mean marked thing where you hold back information but I'm going to tell you what they all are from the beginning. I'm going to go through them very quickly and then we're going to go into more depth around each of these areas and I have been use, using this strategy for the, at least the last 14 months and I have seen my results dramatically change and I'm saying that I'm coming from a place of somebody who maybe three or four years ago wasn't generating leads and now I'm getting that result so that I know that it works and I want you to be able to do the same thing as well. Yeah. So we start at the refine and refocus kind of jigsaw piece and mm -hmm. the reason why there's two R, there's two R's here is that it depends where you are on your blogging journey so some of you will be brand new to blogging and right now it's about you refining and defining what niche and area you want to be in and for other people it's going to be refocusing because you've been doing it for a long time and you might not be getting the results that you want and so you have to make some changes. It may be some minor tweaks or it may be some full-blown rebranding starting from scratch and although that sounds, sounds scary, <laughs> I've done it and I've got the results and I know yeah. that other people can do it too. It, it, it's, it's very, yeah. very scary. If you've been blogging for a long, long time, for a lot of years, and you're only getting a few leads here and there. But I just want you to know, from my own personal experience, it is worth doing. So when, when you talk about refocus, Beth, do you mean a completely change tact on what you're doing? Um, what would be, if somebody wanted to refocus, say they've been blogging for maybe a year, two years and they've just been putting out general uh, pieces of value, how to's, their own specific sort of thoughts. What would you suggest they do when you're talking about refocus or are you going to cover that a bit later? I'm going to come on to cover that a little bit um, as we go through but it is, a, it is about this you know the word niche and finding your niche which I know a lot of people have heard me talk about a lot of times in the past but I'm very passionate about it because I know how important it is. It depends on where you are, it depends on how much growth you want and if, you, if you're happy with the amount of lead you're generating everybody's circumstances are going to be completely different but it's about thinking about what really interests you, what you can engage people on, what people know you as being good at and where you feel comfortable online talking about but it's going to be different for different people mm -hmm. okay. so we'll, we'll come on to that 
The second jigsaw piece is research. Again, research can sometimes to some people feel like a little bit of a scary word, but this is just about you being able to become the kind of expert in your niche, be on top of what is happening in your particular world by using lots of different resources. And then that moves into the reporting stage. So the third R is reporting. So this is where you, it's almost like a journalist. You're gathering all this content and information. You're reading, you're listening, and you're communicating with people in this space. And then you have to be able to report that information in a way that is digestible, that will engage people, and you're going to be seen as somebody that has an authority in that particular space. The third the third, the third R is redistribute, and I've, been, I've had a bit of poetic license here, really, because what I'm talking about here is content syndication, which most people will be more familiar with. So when I'm saying redistribute, it's about taking your blog content and sharing it in the maximum amount of places to ensure that you get as much exposure for your content each and every time you create your content. The fifth R is respond. And this is really critical. This is where you can really build relationships by just engaging with the people who leave comments on your blogs. And if you ask the right questions at the end of your blog, you can get people to engage with you. And I'm going to show you kind of some of the conversations that happen on my blog so you can see how you can do it and how you can really build out those relationships just by responding to your blog comments. And it, it seems really obvious but I know not a lot not I'm gonna say not a lot of people are doing it completely perfectly in terms of building your influence. And then the last to go over and over and over and over that strategy again and again. And although that may seem really simple you might be thinking, right, I know little bits of all of that. It's not until you put all those jigsaw pieces together that you start to get the results that, that you deserve to get. And the good thing about repeat is that it's about consistency as opposed to X number of times that you do something. So for example, I have been able to build my list significantly in the last 14 months by just being consistent and just doing content once a week instead of people having to spend loads of time writing loads of blog posts a week. Some people think you need to do three or four pieces of content a week. You don't, you just need to be consistent. So however you're going to repeat that, it just needs to be consistent. So I've, I've, um... I think, Beth, that, that for me, when we've spoken before, um, that was an eye-opener for me because I know that you've been consistent and I know that you've got results. And being in places before when I've been told, you've got to blog daily, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, and then it means I've not got time for the other things. I think that was a real eye-opener for me. Yeah, and if you think about building relationships with people and the people on your list, can you imagine how annoyed? <laughs> I think, I mean, sometimes I think when I'm, sending emails out all the time thinking oh, they're really going to get annoyed with me now but can you imagine if you put a blog post out there every day and then shared that content every day and although you, you're growing out your circle of influence you're going to turn a lot of people off as well so it's about finding that right balance and building that relationship with the people who um, who really like your stuff who really dig what you're doing mm. so I'm going to I want to share this not because I'm a kind of blow my own trumpet, although I do have a trumpet here. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. I know, sorry. Um, but because I just want to, I want to come from a place of why have I got, why am I justified to be able to say this? Um, and it's because I've been blogging a long time, I've been blogging since back in 2009, and it's only in the last. Oh dear. That was me blowing my trumpet, sorry. That's, very, that's a lot more tuneful than mine, Angus. I'm very jealous. Yeah, I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to show you these figures, not, not to show off, but so you can see that it's doable and it's possible. So if you look first of all at the open rates down the side, 47.1% open rate on this email list, I feel is quite good. I don't know what other people think about open rates, but I think that's quite high in this industry yeah, that is and good. in this in the niche that I'm in specifically, which is obviously blogging. There are lots of blog type blogs out there. Um, so I'm very happy with that. Um, and at the bottom, there's kind of a, 
a breakdown of my Aweber kind of subscribers. So this was taken yesterday morning. So there was nine subscribers yesterday for the day after. Um, you'll see that the grand total for this list is 1,624. Currently sub subscribed 1,167. And there's been this big number of 457 that have unsubscribed. Now, some people might think that's a massive number of people to unsubscribe. But as Angus and Debbie will, will say as well, it's about having the people who like you on your list. So we kind of, we have a little bit of a happy dance when we lose people. Yeah, because you're, commuting, you're um, giving them the right message. Your, your message is matching the people that are yeah. actually subscribed to your list now. So the ones that have unsubscribed, it's great because you know you don't need to bother them anymore and they don't need to bother you and so yeah it's great so the ones that are subscribed the 1167 are the people that want to listen to you and hear what you've got to say so it's fantastic brilliant yeah exactly because I think some people think that it's about how big your list is mm -mm. and it isn't it's about the relationship that you've got with the people on your list I would rather have a hundred people who know my name and open up my emails than 10,000 people who have no idea who I am and who couldn't care less if I disappeared tomorrow and, and never resurfaced. You know, I, I like to have a real intimate relationship with the people on my list. So yeah. to bear that in mind as you're growing your list, however big your list is right now. Yeah. So the first one, refine and refocus. So refine is to make minor changes, so in to improve or clarify your blog. So to making little minor changes to make what you're doing better. And sometimes it can just be a little minor tweak. It might be putting a capture page in the right place, or it might be just using the right words at the other blog post. And sometimes it's refocus, which is what I had to do, which is adjust the focus on something to something new or completely different. Have you got any questions in the chat as we as we move on. I can't see the chat, so. Um, Mark, excellent open rates. Other people are saying great. Um, it's a minute or two behind, so if people have got questions, I'm keeping an eye out for you. Thank you, Angus. Okay, so this is what we're... I'll keep an eye out. Thank you, Angus. So I just want to go back to where I was around 2009. Some of you like Donna and um, David will remember me back around 2008, I think it might have been, but I started my blog in 2009 and I had a website called BethyOnline.com and I ran that for three years and I blogged about absolutely everything. A lot of you have heard this story before, but I blogged about internet marketing, network marketing, personal development, Twitter marketing, social media, um, anything and everything blogging you name it I was blogging about it and what happened was I was generating leads but they were completely all over the place they they didn't know what my specialism was so when I sent out a different email about something else the, the people who had subscribed me for Twitter information were now getting blogging information and they were just complete like what is this woman doing kind of thing so it was no great mystery as to why I wasn't having the success even though I created great networks, I, I met a lot of great people, I was able to sell things here and there, it wasn't reliable and it just, it wasn't that, the market match wasn't right. And I don't know if other people can resonate with what I've just said there, if, if you are perhaps a little bit unclear on what your niche is or you're not really sure how to identify yourself online, but that's where I was and that's why I needed to change. Yeah, um, David remembers you. <laughs> yeah, and I think David even did a guest post on BethyOnline.com as well. So I had I had guest bloggers on there as well. who were talking about their things. <laughs> I think when you first I think when you first start out in in marketing, um, you're not really aware that niching is the thing that is going to get you that kind of focus and people tend to spread their net really far and wide and I think to an extent myself I'm probably still a little bit guilty of that and it takes you a while to, to really establish where you are and where, you, where you're coming from and, and what what your passion is and once once you really sort of start to go back to the things that you're passionate 
about and and integrate that in with your marketing then it can it can carry you forward and that's where you're saying about the either the redefining or the actual refocus so if you've already sussed out what your niche is going to be then you may need to be you know tweaking every so often because no website is ever finished it's always a continual piece I would I would say yeah. um, especially if you're blogging you're always updating um, yeah but a lot of people when they first start out they make the mistake that they need to cast their, their net really far and wide and, and there's nothing wrong with that it's just I think people do that when they first start because they don't they don't really know which direction they're going to they're going to go in, and that's a bit like you know, when you're growing up, you might start off be, wanting to be you know an astronaut, and then when you actually do finally grow up, you end up being a policeman or woman or something completely different, you know. So it's all about growing up and and when you're growing up online as to where you're going to go. So it makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah, and that's absolutely true. I don't want people to think like at the moment if you just started blogging or you've not been blogging that long and you're still trying to find your voice, I don't want you to think, oh my God, I need to do this refocusing, rebranding right now. What I'm saying is that there will be there will come a point where you're not getting the results that you deserve and I need you to have at the back of your mind that it's okay to rebrand now. That's what I'm saying. So it is a journey and obviously I learned a tremendous amount in those first three years online, which equipped me to then be in a good place when I did rebrand so the whole process of setting up a new blog you know the kind of hurdles that you go through when you first set up a blog weren't an issue anymore because I'd learned all that and that's where you would be as well if you had to go down this route because you've already think, sorry yeah I think what you're saying is really important if you're not sure to keep doing it um, I mean we've been chatting about that recently and like I still do quite a bit of that although I know where I want to go and I'm kind of at the threshold of knowing where I want to do but I still to do it and mm -hmm. so I think it's important to keep doing it. I've got a question from Jax Henderson, a lovely Hello, Jax. Jax. Hey. What brought your clarity for the Simple Blogging Network? Um, I had some coaching and um, it was just going back to the basics of what am I passionate about and it was staring me in the face all the time. The thing that I really liked doing was blogging itself and it was a bit, a little bit like the, the couldn't see the, the woods for the trees kind of thing. Is that the right way around? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really interesting because that's what happened to me when I was talking to Debbie a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, sometimes it's so obvious. It's so obvious to everybody else. So ask the peer, people around you. Ask your friends. What What do you consider to me to be good at? And if I just move on to the next slide, because that's a little bit what we're talking about now is. What do other people say you're good at? What comes naturally to you? People talk about this passion thing, and it is a it is a passion. But sometimes people think, oh, I don't know what that is. What did you love to do as a child? I've used this analogy quite a few times before on the webinars that I've done, but what is your favourite section in the bookstore? Because everywhere in the bookstore is already separated up into all these different places. Where do you go when you go in a bookshop? What section are you drawn to? Because that tells you a lot about the kind of things that you are interested in. And then this last kind of box here with the eyes, what, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? So these are all questions to help you figure out your niche, but I've actually done an ebook on this as well which if you subscribe to my newsletter it's the first thing that you will get if anybody needs redirecting that link I'll, I'll get that for you but if you're not already on my main newsletter you will get a free ebook um, which is here so it's simple blogging network forward slash it's so blogging simple and you'll get you'll get the finding your niche workbook then there's another workbook which helps you define that even further so drilling down into a niche and then there's some there's another ebook around different topics for any niche to help you do blog posts and things like that so mm. if you haven't got that go ahead and have a look at that. Do you know what I liked as a child? Go on. <laughs> Playing with <laughs> Lego. <laughs> Playing oh. with Lego. <laughs> Building things. I really liked yeah. that. Yeah, I really liked that. But in the in the in the bookshop it was always the fiction. It was always the stories. Oh. Mm. But that's really interesting because um, I'm just checking I'm not muted yet. I mean that's what happened to me a few weeks ago I was thinking about there are certain type of blog posts 
that I love reading, and I, I constantly check my iPad and my iPhone to get up-to-date information on these things. Yeah. Um, and it is, it's what, and for me, it, for me, it's all about fun and it's all about passion. And if you don't have these, then it's harder to motivate yourself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So the next stage is, is there is any more questions on, on the niche area? And do we find um, me focusing? Cause it, is a big, it is a big area and I'm happy I think to do some more. Yeah, I think that's a really big area. I think that's really important because working on that, when you know, once you find out what your niche is, I mean, let's say for example, you've got somebody that really loves to do, um, I don't know. Let's let's say they really love um, networking. That's their really big thing. It's con, you know, communicating and and um, connecting with people. That's the thing that they love to do. Where would they go? What you know? What's their next kind of step? How how are they going to work out what their next step is? Do your eBooks share that, or or have you got any suggestions on that? Um, well, I'm going to come on to now the research side of it, which actually talks about where you can get different information from. Mm. Um, but in terms of, it's, it's just about what are you naturally interested in and, and having a kind of as wide a net as possible around your particular area and just kind of immersing yourself in that. Because it's like, you know, when you step away from being online for a few days, you kind of think, oh, I'm out of the loop kind of thing but then you go back in and you spend maybe a day doing something and you get really back into it and you have all these sparks in your head and everything going off and ideas and it's a little bit like that is that if you don't immerse yourself in all this really great information then you're kind of missing out on all these ideas that you could potentially have for your niche. Cool. So research. So the systematic search for information in a particular area to establish new facts and conclusions so you can become the go-to expert. And this is what this is the, the bit I like about research is when you put your own spin on it, when you find your own voice, when you're not just reporting information. You're not just taking information from one place and then creating a blog post on it, but you're actually putting your own spin on it with your own feelings and thoughts on it. That's when it it really comes alive for me, and that's where you can really start to become an expert in your particular niche. It's a bit like what you're told at school, which we all hated, when they say you need to do an essay, but you need to put your kind of spin on it. Mm. I, I would imagine, Angus, you get a lot of that. If you've got, oops, <laughs> if you've got mm -hmm. kids that need to write an essay, and it's and you've studied a book in school. I mean, what age are your kids? Would they be writing stories? Seven and eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they'd just be starting to write stories. So do, yeah. do they get their own spin? Do they? Do they put their own? Yeah, I mean, you could. For I love doing things like that. Like maybe doing something like. A traditional fairy tale and getting them to do their own ending or change the characters or things like that. So. Cool. Yes. So where would people generally currently get their ideas or research from for when they're creating a blog post, if, if that's what you do? Uh, there's this thing called Google. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard of that. No, no. Bad, no. Uh, encyclopedias are a good option. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember those? You're probably too young to remember those. <laughs> <laughs> Britannica encyclopedia. Yeah. Often, often if I see somebody asking a question, then I used to do this a lot more, but if somebody was in a Facebook group or something that I belonged to, saying to someone, or even messaged me and said, how do you do such and such, I would say I'll shoot a video or I'll do a blog post on it. Yeah. So apart from the encyclopedia, um, Debbie, is anybody in the chat room who's in the 21st century? <laughs> 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 well, no, you, you 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 joke about that. There's 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 Google, obviously, and then on Google there's Wikipedia, which I know is a yeah. um you can add your own content to Wikipedia, but 
in actual fact, I find myself going to Wikipedia more and more for, for different do. things. Normally for gossip, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, yeah. how, how many, or well, what's the titles of the trilogy uh, films of The Lord of the Rings or, you know, The Hunger Games or how something many like that? Have been, have, things like yeah. that. <laughs> that kind of stuff. No, but generally, it's, it, it's Google um, and various other blogs as well because Google, if you're putting in the search, Google will bring up the blogs, YouTube, um, all of the, uh, Vimeo, is it Vimeo, Vine, all of those yeah, kind yeah. of things, yeah. Yeah, Ron, Ron uses YouTube a lot, Andy, yeah, Alan Turner still has some encyclopedias, WikiLeaks, Ooh. and Heather is very good, she uses daily interactions, Clyde's questions, and other people's blogs as well. Cool. So, we mentioned quite a few of those now, so books and encyclopedias, there you go, Debbie, that's for you, the top <laughs> left hand. <laughs> <laughs> and forums are a really great place to find information because forums, people ask a lot of questions in forums naturally, that's where they tend to go if they're looking for information on something, so find forums in your particular niche subscribe to them and the, only, the really great, great thing about forums is that you can add your signature in them as well so you can lead them back to your blog or your capture page where they, you're going to give them an answer to something in your particular niche. YouTube like Rod said. Mm -hmm. Podcasts, something that I'm really passionate about at the moment. There's a wealth of information that you can get from listening to podcasts. The pro blogger site is obviously an authority site in my particular niche, but you need to think about what authority sites are out there mm -hmm. in your particular space that you can subscribe to. You can subscribe to the RSS feeds, um, you can get daily content from them, so you're never going to be short of information. And then just general social media, you know, what's out there, what are people talking about on all these different sites that you are currently a member of. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what we do is we have uh, an RSS feed that we um, use. Mm -hmm. I use Feedly, which I yeah. quite like. And then I've got various topics that I, I run through. Some might be marketing, some might be blogging, copywriting, um, that kind of thing. One of the, the um, channels that I subscribe to that I get quite a lot of information is the TED Talks. I find mm -hmm. they're really interesting. Um, yeah. Just lately I've been listening and watching those. So there's some information there. But if you've got it all in one place and just every morning you check and you and you go over what um, is in your topic, so to speak, is in your niche, if it's there all in one place. Mm -hmm. Google Alerts is another thing that you can do. That's, yeah. that's a good way of researching. So if you're looking for a particular keyword, Mm -hmm. um, then every time there's some new information, Google Alerts will let you know, and then you can go and check that out. And that's, I believe, that's in all of them, isn't it? It's not just blogs; it's forums; it's anything that is yeah. put up. So that's a absolutely. And um, I I quite like finding funny things as well. You know, just finding things that are related to your niche but are a little bit wacky and a little bit out there. And yeah. just, the, the idea of actually making people laugh in, in your marketing. Mm -hmm. People like laughing, would you believe it? And um, that's what I try and brought the do, the do, the do. So I've heard, <laughs> I read that somewhere on a blog. 95% um, <laughs> of marketers love to laugh. How can you make your marketers <laughs> laugh more? <laughs> Smile. <laughs> I think I think it's you know that we we have to mix it up, and I think if you can find a really funny piece of content, then people are going to remember you for making them laugh. You know, instead yeah, of sending me, them. A, yeah, it's about being different, and it's about doing things differently. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so becoming the go-to expert in your particular niche. So you start down here at the little superstar. Do you like mm -hmm. my diagram? So you read your blog posts in your particular niche, you watch videos, you read books, you keep on learning, so you're researching your industry, you're subscribing to all these RSS feeds, and then you start to report, so this is the reporting stage, you start to report on your particular industry. 
and you create loads of content, you engage with people, you listen to what people want and you start to share that information with them consistently. Now you can, I've got here, tease your fans and followers and use curiosity. Sometimes we want to give people all of the information and sometimes we're wanting to grow our list and I would say that we want to be growing our list pretty much most of the time. So you want to tease your fans and say you've got this piece of content that you want to share with people. Get them to opt on a list or something to get it if you've done a video or something or just be creative in how you can generate more leads via your content. But then keep your balance. You know, don't go too one way so that you just leads, 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 leads. As in generating leads, not leads united. For those of us in the UK. Um, <laughs> No. <laughs> do they still exist? Um, they do. I'm not sure what league they're in. Don't they do? Um, and then don't give too much away all the all of the time. When I had the BethyWhatOnline.com, I used to create the best content. Like it was, it was like, and, and I'm not, I'm not saying don't create your best content, but I used to just give content away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know for you. And do, do you know what I mean? And and you always want to do great content. You always want to provide value, but you, at the same time, you don't just want to be giving it away from a free because, for free because this is a business you're trying to create. In most instances, if it's not a hobby, you're actually trying to create an online income. So by doing that and reporting in this way and becoming like the journalist in your particular niche, you go from being this little star to this big superstar. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know I could do these sound effects, did you? No, I did not know. <laughs> I'm very impressed. Um, and then you start to be known for the person in your particular niche, where people will go to... There That's you what go. I was waiting for. Yeah. Late, sorry, That's yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. I don't know where you're getting all this from. I can't even. I can't see nothing on my control panel. Oh dear. Oh no. Not one of those. Oh, the ship. <laughs> it's coming through. <laughs> Excuse you, Angus. <laughs> so, if you if you're reporting and writing in your particular niche, do you think it won't be long until somebody starts seeing you as that particular person in that particular space? that people are going to be attracted to you, that they're going to come and ask you specific questions. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is anything in the chat? Uh, I'm just getting rid of my Google effects to check the chat. Um, no, because it's delayed by a minute or two, so... Okay, okay. Anybody got anything you want to put in chat about niche or about so far? You could open up Q and A, and they could put yeah. questions yeah. in that. Can you do that, Angus? If it's not already open. Um, I've clicked on opening. Ask your audience. But okay, yeah, I think I've opened it. Is the Q and A open now for people? I can't see, but I'm sure that it is. Okay. Okay, so the next stage is then redistributing our content syndication in terms of getting your content out there. So the first thing that you're going to want to do if you haven't done it already is create all your social profiles on all these different places. So the main ones are if it's a YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, everybody's got Facebook, Google+. Plus. Google+, Plus communities are a really great place to engage with people um, if you kind of moving away from Facebook, Facebook a little, I don't use it to you. Stumble upon, LinkedIn, there are lots and lots of sites that you can sign up with. And you want to share your content. So the first little box on the left with the slingshot is email. And it's just getting into the habit of emailing your list when you have created new content. Before, when I had BethyOnline.com, I would create my blog post, I would put content out there, but I wasn't necessarily telling my list that I had got content out there, and it just seems so obvious. So if you are not emailing your list with your new blog post, then you are missing out 
on connecting with your audience. And remember, don't, I mean, don't feel bad about sending them an email with your blog content because they have subscribed to your blog. If you've said yes. that's what you're going to do, then it's okay to do it. This next picture is, this is first glance of my new community site, which I'm still working on. <laughs> but this is, this is talking about communities generally. Ta-da! <laughs> so obviously I'm creating my own Simple blog, Blogging Network community site at the moment where everything's going to be together, there's going to be a forum, you're going to get access to the direct to the blogs, there's going to be the webinars and podcasts on their trading and then the challenges, the 30 day challenges that mm -hmm. some of you may have been involved in in the past, which we're going to do every 30 days, so instead of quarters they're going to be every month and people can join at any time. But this image is really to share with you communities generally, there are lots of communities out there that you can share your content in, whether it's in a Facebook group or there are things like Biz Sugar or Blog Engage, you just need to go look and find the communities in your particular space and get your content out there. The image below that with the people all joined together is about tribes. A lot of people will have heard about tribe um, syndication and, and being in a tribe to share your content. Myself, Angus and Debbie and a few other other of us, when we create content, whether it's to advertise a webinar or about a blog post or an event, we will tag each other in that content on Facebook. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out there and tag people, but it's okay to work with people in your particular space if you've got some kind of mutual agreement to get your content out there a little bit more. And we do that for each other, and we even promote via our email list as well. Yeah. For example, yeah. Angus sent out an email. Debbie did write an email, but something happened. Well, yeah. <laughs> Aweber gobbled we it up. We won't talk about it. Oh, Aweber yeah. gobbled, gobbled it up. I was very disappointed. <laughs> the the two-minute um, save your draft thing, it just wasn't working, and I searched yeah. the entire bit. I was literally just doing the last my PS. I'd written this fantastic email. It was all about Neanderthal man and cavemen and all that kind of stuff. And mm. It was, seriously. And um, it was a really good story. And, uh, yeah, it just got to the PS and poof, it went. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't that know. Find, that find a mistake, where you, you need to, when you do it first, often save it immediately. Or it I know. Seem I broke my own golden rule, the rule yeah. that I've always taught. Save as you go. And I broke my own go. golden rule. Slap Andy, Andy's asking what about things for getting links back to your site, like Boke or BokTube or something? Uh, I'm not familiar with that. I've heard of it, but I'm not familiar with it. Um, the way that Google's going, obviously you want to have links back to your site, but they need to be congruent with what you're doing. So the, the kind of old rules of doing loads of article marketing and link farms and all this stuff, it's not what you want to be doing anymore. You want to be concentrating on commenting on blogs in your particular niche, building relationships with people in your niche, and you will naturally generate links that way by your, your content, which is social. Um, you could do guest blog posts on people's sites in your particular niche, so you're putting yourself in front of their already made communities. I have got um, a training on guest blogging, which people can get hold of. Um, it's a video that you can, you can look at, um, and it talks about how to do guest blogging the right way. Um, I don't know this particular resource that you're talking about. Yes, we want to have links back to our site, but we also want to make sure that they are congruent and relevant to our particular niche. Otherwise, you could be doing yourself a disservice rather than... Yeah, good. Google talks about sandboxing you if you have too yeah. many backlinks and, you know, it's it's they not... Want, they want sand in knickers, do we? No, we don't. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not what it used to be. Those backlinks are not what they used to be. No. The, you obviously need them, but you need to be a little bit more creative around how you get them. Yeah. Buffer is... There are lots of ways that you can share your content. There are lots of tools to help you do that. I've used only wire successfully in the past. There's paid things like Tribe Pro and Triber and all these different places. I'm currently using Buffer because it's quick and easy. I and, love Buffer. And I love it. Yeah, I love it. And um, I've got a blog post on my site 
that I did quite recently on Buffer, I can set up all of my content for the month and leave it to run. And um, it's just great. I just love it. So if you're not using Buffer, that's a really great resource. It's free, but there is a, an upgrade if you, if you want to get a paid version as well, which allows you to have more content uh, in your kind of funnel. But it's a great, it's a great, great tool. The question mark is there just to ask people, have they got other ways that they share content that they want to share on the webinar? I know we're a little bit of a delay. I don't know if Angus and Debbie, if you've got anything that you Jack's want to share. Thing, blog, blog cube is a free blogging site. Cool. Go check it out, guys. Good to, good to, yeah. I tend to just um, share off of my Shareaholic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I find, that, mm -hmm. I find that really just the quickest and easiest way to do it is to just go through all of the, the things that I have coming up on my Shareaholic and do that. Yeah. Because if it, that, that is useful if you're doing, um, you don't have a lot of time. Because then you kind of know that you're getting everything and you're doing it that way. But like you say, buffer is buffer app is is another way. Yeah, I always do it. Um, I always do it from the post. So when I've done the blog post, I will then click down all the social profiles on my blog. So I do it as yeah. part of that course. But the, the thing about buffer is that you can take all your past content, so all the content that's sitting there on your blog, and re-syndicate it. So it's not. I've been, in, in the past, I've written content and then I've not done anything with it after I've done that blog post apart from sharing it at that point in time. And we have to get into the habit of reusing our really great content so it's not just sat there. And Buffer is a really great way of doing that over and over and over and over again. So do you, yeah, that so, sounds good. Yeah. So, so you what, just load it up with your old content, you mean? Yeah, load it up with my, own co my old content and share it in all the different places. You know, over a month, spread out, whether it's daily, um, at different times, scheduling it, and it gets more eyeballs on your content. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. David is asking, he's using the free version of Buffer, but he's thinking about getting the paid one. Is it worth it? I think it's definitely worth it. I use it. I set it up at the beginning of the month to let it run, and that's it. I think it's about $15. What's the difference? I use the free one, it lets me subscribe to three channels, but the paid one lets you do more. And does it what else does it do? Uh, I'm not sure what all the features are. It just I, I think it allows you to do a lot more and add more okay. profiles. So you can have your fan page, your Facebook page, LinkedIn now, Google Plus is on there now. Um, I've got an a API for Google Plus now. Yeah, yeah, recently they got it, yeah. Because yeah. we investigated it, but it's just a page, isn't it? Yeah. yeah but go yeah. check it out. Go, go see what it's got. So is that $15 really, a month really. or 15 I think it might be less than that. I think it's a month. If it's not 15 it's 10 It's thereabouts. Yeah. might be 12 yeah. <laughs> 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 I have no idea, guys. Go, go have a look. Yeah. There's nothing. No there's, we we looked at uh, Hootsuite. We didn't really go for Hootsuite, did we, Angus? We didn't. No, we didn't like it. No. Um, and then what was the other one we went for? We looked at. We've looked at quite a few. Yeah, yeah. just because one of the things we wanted was to be able to post to Google. But yeah, but that but disclaimer. That's just our views. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Other content syndication tools are available. Mm. So you're basically saying, Beth, to make sure you syndicate and share your content with whatever yeah. you have, and yeah. then there are some ways to do it automatically as well. Yeah, do it automatically, but also think about all the past content that you have created, and don't just leave it, because you're just wasting effort that you put in. You need to leverage time. So you People. might put out, what you're saying is you might put out the same blog post hmm. every single month. Yeah. I like that idea because I know that this post I did in the past that I really like or I got good feedback on and I tend to not do things with them unless I see that someone's looking for that particular tool. Why, like why would yeah, why would you not do that? Why why would you think brilliant. that only the people when you've shared it the first time can see that content when there's yeah. so many people in the world? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Very true. Very if anybody, true. if anybody's got any more suggestions, um, <laughs> you can't let him near a gadget, but I don't know. <laughs> how did you give him control and no, not me? No. <laughs> I'm sitting here with my know, fingers. No Sorry. Sorry. Very foolish. <laughs> I can't even turn my hat off. <laughs> 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 I have no control. I've lost everything. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. I, I might have found one. Right, the next part of the jigsaw piece is about responding to the people that leave comments on your blog. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to my blog, and I know this sounds really obvious. It's like I'm, I almost feel like I'm telling you what you already know, but don't never miss an opportunity to respond but and build a relationship with somebody. Oh, we've got a feedback then. So if I go to my blog. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You see my screen still? Yeah. Let's see. Buffer app. Is, pop -ups. Sorry, Buffer app is ten dollars a month, and it lets you have unlimited posts and twelve social profiles. Cool. Che cheapest chips. Yeah. Yeah. We like chip. Buffer. We do. We love it. The good thing with Buffer as well is that it lets you stagger it. I don't know. If... Yeah. I'm not. Oh yeah, you see there. So. I've just clicked so you can see. So it lets you stagger it. So if you go to another blog post and you wanted to share their content, you would click on the tweet mm -hmm. button and it'll give you this option to buffer it. I'm not signed in. So it would normally say like tweet here, so it would tweet it automatically. Or you could click buffer and it'd add it to a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it kind of adds it, what's the word, Angus? Um, yeah, a, a schedule. Like a scheduler, yes. Yeah, so a schedule. Um, so, yeah. So it might not then buffer it for another three hours, but it allows you to so it allows you to spread your content out. So you could essentially, if you were just looking for content to syndicate of other people, just so you, you're being social, you could look at what other people are doing and just fill your buffer up with other people's content and get and get known yeah. and get seen that way. Right, let's click on that. Ooh, I like that. So, so the reason why. I get comments is that I always ask a question mm -hmm. at the end of my blog post. Again, this is really, really important because you want to engage people. You peep, what, are, what are people, Debbie? <laughs> Come on, Debbie, what are people? <laughs> people are your um, pros prospects. People are your clients. People no, are but, interested in you. Yeah, but what are they? What are people they? Need to yeah. think. No, I can't say it. Can't say it. Oh. People need direction. <laughs> no, I wanted to say it, but I didn't. No, it's rude. People need direction, <laughs> there. That's what they are. Yeah, pe they need pe guidance. People yes. need guidance, <laughs> and it's just the way we are. We're just built that way. We we hover about on the internet. We click on something we like, and off we go, and we forget where we were. So we're all the same. So it's good to have call to actions, and it's good to have questions at the end of your blog posts, mm -hmm. um, asking people to do something. So on this megaphone review that I did, I hope you enjoyed my megaphone review. If you have questions, I'm asking people to leave the comments below, or they can email me as well. So I'm actually saying you can physically email me with your questions or you can leave something below if you have a burning question. Now what are the chances if they've just watched my review and they've got a question that they're going to ask me it? Instead, high. yeah, instead of going to Google and doing a bit more research. If I hadn't put that question there, they could have easily have gone to somebody else's blog because they've done a bit more research on Google. But I'm giving them permission and I know this sounds really really simple. But it's so important in terms of building that relationship with people and generating leads because they know that you're approachable. They're going to opt on your list because they know that you're that kind of person. And it might be just something as simple as this that you need to do with your blog to get people on your email list. Yeah. So I'm also telling them, if you, want to, if you want to get started right away, then click on the banner. 
you know, go get it. If you're not, then you leave me a question. Then I'm saying, have you used Megaphone? So I'm even trying to cater to the people who I'm not going to sell to because they've already got it or they've already got some other tool that they're using. But I still, I don't want to discriminate against them. I, I want to hear their thoughts as well. So I'm trying to cater for everybody. I want people who have got questions to leave comments. I want people who have used different tools to Megaphone to leave comments. I want people who have used Megaphone to leave comments. I want as many people as possible who I can think about to leave a comment on my blog. So think about the kind of things that you put at the end of your blog post. Mm -hmm. Before I even get to the comment section, I've, I've then got another call to action around um, which links to MLSP. I know a lot of people in this industry will know what My Lead System Pro is, um, which is just another way of generating leads. Um, but there's a call to action there. And then there's another call to action in terms of subscribing to my newsletter and it tells them what they're going to get. They're going to get a five step simple blogging success ebook, two workbooks to help them figure out their niche, and 30 blog post ideas, blueprint for any niche. Now, I've not just made those things out of thin air. I've actually created those ebooks because I know those are the questions that people are asking in my particular niche. What are the chances of people wanting that information I'm subscribing to, to my yeah, list? Quite high. Yeah, it's not. I feel, I feel almost stupid saying it because I know that a lot of you already know this. But it's almost like I already knew this three years ago, but I wasn't doing it properly. I knew I, I had all the answers, but I wasn't implementing it. And it can be something so subtle as making these little tweaks and having a, a capture page at the end of your blog post, asking a comment at the end of your blog post that is going to considerably change the amount of people that opt into your list. So I'm sorry if I feel like you feel like I'm kind of ranting at you there, but I know but how important these tweaks are. But often it's the basic <laughs> things we forget to do. I mean, I yeah. remember someone being amazed when they were told a few months ago the suggestion about when you do a blog post, go in and sell it to, share it to your own social media. They never thought mm -hmm. of that. Mm. Yeah. So some, we do need reminders. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to leave your comment, sorry, if you're going to leave a question for people to comment, then you have to respond to them. You have to respond to them. So I've asked this question, and this lady called Keba. I'm visiting from UBC. I don't know what that is. Ultimate Blog Challenge. Yeah. Uh, she likes my blog banner. She thinks the megaphone review is fantastic. She's been stressing about a landing page, so she's already she's telling me what her problem is. Um, and you've made me realise mm -hmm. I need an auto responder. So this this lady is hot because. She's beautiful, but she's also hot yeah. because in terms of, I know that she needs. I, I know that she needs an auto responder. And if Keba is on the the webinar, that would be really lovely. Uh, if not, then that's fine too. Maybe she'll see the recording at some point. Um, she needs an auto responder. Well, I have an auto responder that I could provide to her. She also needs um, a tool such as Megaphone. She's telling me that she's. She tells me she knows what constant contact is, but she's not mm -hmm. sure. Um, she's about to start a newsletter using CC, CC constant contact. So I've answered a question in terms of what she's asked there around uh, constant contact. Um, and the great thing is, if you have the Comment Love Premium plugin, which is I know the Comment Love feed, which you get here, where it shows your kind of last blog post on different people's blog posts when you comment on them. The great thing about Comment Love is that it sends them a response when you re reply to that person. So they will get the answer that you just put with a link back to your blog, which is another great way of getting people to engage with you. Seeing if there's any other comments. That so this lady's saying, excellent review. I had a sneaky peek at the product some time ago and was impressed, but then decided to go in another direction. So she's somebody who I've potentially caught who she's already knows about Megaphone, but she's, al she's also decided that she's going to leave me a comment because I've kind of asked her what her perspective is on Megaphone. So she's saying, okay, then I'm going to leave a comment as well. Thanks for your insight, though. You have a beautiful website, and I'm subscribed to your newsletter. Woohoo! Sounds good. Yeah, it's just mm. things. It's just things like that. It's just letting people know that you're here's a lovely Donna who I know is watching. Yes. 
So, and you can see that I've responded to every single person who has left a comment on my blog. And you know what I really like, Beth? The fact that because you are niche and focused, that's easier to do. Like when I started blogging and was blogging about everything, when we were in a group that we used to get in and people were commenting because they were told to, mm -hmm. I found it hard to keep up with the number of comments I was getting. But yeah. I like that because people are only blogging because they're genuinely interested. Yeah. So, but I mean, so it's not wasting time. It's very worthwhile to reply to them. Definitely. You know, it's often in the past for me, you know, at the beginning when I was blogging, it was just to keep up. Yeah. Yeah, and it can be hard. If you're blogging about everything, it can really be hard because you can't possibly know everything mm -hmm. in detail. So it's it's really good if you if you can niche down. Um, if I go into my dashboard, you'll see what I'll just show you the um, it might be a bit slow. So I've got nine comments I need to respond to. Slap my hand. Oh good lord. See if you've got a smartphone. Um, some, what I've done sometimes is if you have a smartphone, it's, it's the WordPress app or even just WordPress now is more mm -hmm. smart, like smartphone usable. Um, yeah. What I do often is if you get a comment and you've been emailed on your phone to tell you, go in immediately and reply to it. Yeah. And you just keep, yeah. keep it on top of it. Yeah. So I'm just going to respond because I think it'll show you what. So if you see here, um, further down, you'll see that when I've replied to this person, it says reply me, comment, reply notification. So I know that a reply was sent to this person. It tells me what day it was and they've got a link to their uh, my last blog post. If I just respond to somebody now, because the other great thing you can do is ask people to get on your list. Great blog you have here, Beth. Can't wait to get the webinar started. I'm, I'm not sure if this gentleman is on the, the webinar right now. If he is, hello. If not, not hello. A really nice blog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shamsuddin. Is that spell that word? Shamsuddin. Sudin. Thank you, Sam Dean. I am using you as a webinar right now. How cool. If you like my content, you might like to subscribe to my blog or to my newsletter. Excellent time. Thank you very much. So then I can link to link link. Put my link to my blog newsletter. It's so blogging simple. Add link. Click approve and reply. What are the chances of this nice young fellow subscribing to my newsletter because I've asked him to? Really obvious and really simple. But I get mm, I get maybe he might just go for it. He might. Squish, 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 squish. You've got a spelling error there, Beth. All right. I'll... Sub -scru 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 yeah, sub -scru 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 <laughs> Oh, one too many bees. But that's uh, it. People like normal people who make mistakes, just like me. Absolutely. Uh, he's going to love me. He is. He <laughs> already does. <laughs> Marriage proposal on its way. <laughs> <sighs> I'm blushing. Okay, so um, I shall come back to my screen. But just, I know it's really obvious, but just get into the habit of responding to all of your comments and thinking about the ways that you can get more people on your list. If people are liking your content and commenting, there is a big chance that they will want to get on your newsletter if they aren't already on there. And obviously, I would have spent a bit more time writing that nice response to Mr. Shamsuddin. Um, 
but you get the idea. Cool. No, you're coming back. So the last R is about just repeating that and doing that over and over and over again. Sorry, Beth, like... I didn't realise I was muted and I was asking you a question. Um, I'm muting myself. R... I was ignoring you. See when... No, I was muted. See when you <laughs> reply to someone, are they notified that you've replied to them? Yeah, they'll get an email now saying, um, Beth, or whatever, Beth, Simple Blogging Network has responded to your comment on this. How do you set off. that up? Because that's something I'm aware of that I haven't done. But I just should um, buy into thin space. To set that up, it's part of the premium okay. um, plugin for Comment Love. Okay. Um, cool. If people want access to that, there is a link on my resources page. So it's Simple Blogging Network forward slash resources. If people want to use that tool, um, it's got lots of other things in there. It's got um, a good spam filter, which is better than asking me. It's got. Um, is it? Yeah. Gas. <laughs> um, that's what it's called. I wasn't gasping. It's called gas. Um, there, there, there are about six different things in there, but it's a really great feature and it is a really great way to to engage with people and to get more people on your list as well. So that's the pro version, though, right? It is the pro version, but it's, I think it's worth it. And it's a one-off fee. Yeah, one-off fee. Cool. Worth buying. And yeah. and you could also be an affiliate to it. No doubt. You can, yeah. Mm, you can affiliate to everything. Mm, absolutely. That people need in your niche. Get into the habit of being an affiliate in everything that people need. Yeah. And then so you would just repeat that process of so going through those process again of creating your content, researching, writing it, reporting it, syndicating it, redistributing it, um, listening to what people are saying what problems they have and writing content around them is a great way to know that you're writing the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in all of those as and I've touched on it a little bit, is you must have a call to action and ask for interaction on your blog posts. And you must have a way to capture leads. Um, you can do it with a basic form in, in for example, Aweber or Get Response, whatever your particular autoresponder is, or you can can be part of a lead generation system like My Lead System Pros, which is what myself, Debbie, and Angus personally use. But there are other um, systems out there. But that's what works for me, uh, and I know works for a lot of other online marketers out there as well. So, two questions for you. Uh huh. Um, Cindy Watts has just jumped on. She's asking if it's recorded. It certainly is. So is she she must be on your list, yeah. Um, if she's on the web, so, if, she's on, if she's on the webinar, she's on the list. She will get a recording of the webinar. Yeah, cool. And David is asking if we know how much the one-time fee is. Um, for comment, I'm love. not sure. Yeah, I'm not I'll sure. Google it. I think it's about thirty dollars. Yeah. I think. If you click on. I'm just. I'm not sure. We can have a look. Lastly, it's um, give people what they want and need. And if you're doing your research properly and you are reading all the current authority blogs, if you're listening to podcasts, if you are following people who've got authority in your particular area, you can't go wrong because if they're doing a good job, it's because they're providing value to their people as well. So give people what they want and need. Answer the comments. Listen to what they're saying in the comments, listen to what they're saying in forums, listen to what they're saying on social media and provide that value and content. Give people what they want and not what you think they need. A comment love is um, $67 okay. for a single site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Multi-site is 87 and unlimited is 97. So what that means is that you can, if you get the unlimited version, you can use it on as many sites as you want and wherever yeah. you need to. Yeah. Yep. And you can become an affiliate as well. And you can become an affiliate. Yeah. So yeah. If you want to message Beth. It's pretty cool. So, so has anybody else got any more blogging questions? We have come to the end. I know we've gone over a little bit. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. 
It was all those sound effects that Angus put in. I know. Oh, yeah. I'm I know. Good. I, I've got a question. I've got a question. Going back Go to Go the, the refocusing, okay? Yeah. Oh. That's what we think of refocusing. <laughs> 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 oh, God, I'm under pressure now. The clock is ticking. So you, you want to refocus. And you you you've gone through your ebooks and you've looked at your niche and you've decided that you your your niche is going to be blah 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 right mm -hmm. you've you've yeah. already got an existing blog with a ton of content on it that is yeah. not disastrous yeah. however it's mm -hmm. not all specific to your niche mm -hmm. what do you do to cross over to get specifically into just your niche because you're you're when you first started blogging you know you didn't instantly have a ton of content it took you a while to get that together so do you create a load of content before you present your new blog or do you just sort of like forget everything else chuck it out you know chuck the baby out with the bathwater um, and start from fresh how would you re refocus and rebrand what would you do Beth Okay, so it's going to be different for different people. Um, I stole a few questions in there, Debbie. <laughs> there was, wasn't there? There was quite a lot of it yeah. in there. That was a heavy one. Yeah, there was. Yeah. So one of the questions was about um, do you throw out all your old content? Mm -hmm. And you need to really, you need to think about is it going to be relevant to your your new path? Could it still be used? So, for example, there are things on BethUOnline.com which might be around Twitter, I might have written something about Twitter marketing. What I could do now is take that content and do a blog post around um, how to use Twitter if you're a blogger. So I could take that content and, and refocus it to what I'm doing. Repurpose it. Repurpose it. If, it, if, yeah. if, it, if there's no way that you can make that connection, then obviously you're starting afresh, you're creating new content. It's going to be different for different people. Um, when I restarted Simple Blogging Network, I had one blog post, I had a capture page, I had nobody on my fan page, but I put it all out there because from day one you can start generating leads and to like your fan page um, and just build it up. I started with w one blog post, one capture page, and you can go back and you can go right to the back to when I started again 14 months ago, um, and I've just built it up from scratch. So don't be afraid of just putting one blog post out there. Cool. Just be consistent. Cool. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking as well. Because I'm kind of sorting all that out in my head at the moment. So. Yeah. But, but go through all your old content, content and think, and you know, just make a list of them. What what will fit naturally into what I'm going to be doing now? Could I use that in some way? But by yeah, just... I, was going, I was going to repurpose <laughs> some of it. Or sometimes what I do is that I maybe go in and write a new blog post, but link it to the old one. Mm -hmm. mm. Because this is all about growth, isn't it? Really. I mean, you know, you you get to a certain position, and and then so that you continually growing you mm -hmm. are and as you're saying refocus refocus is good but it could be that you may refocus again in in another 14 months time Beth with something else it may Absolutely. be that you know you're growing yeah. and it's that evolution of, of you as a person and, and as your brand because that that's what companies do that's what businesses do they're constantly growing and they're constantly evolving and everything about them it's not just what they're putting out there and what they're producing it's also their whole aspect how they look I mean you look at you look at companies you think of a company like BP British Petroleum a, a, an oil company that's been around for donkeys and donkeys and donkeys and you think of their logo what their logo was in the 1950s to what it is now it doesn't look anything like it in the 1950s. It was a little shield with a BP in the middle, and now it's this yeah. big Helios flower thing mm -hmm. with BP in the middle. It's completely evolved, and yet we still recognise both. And and that's this is what growth is all about. So repurposing or um, not repurposing, refocusing is is a really good thing for <laughs> for us to be doing, so that we're continually growing and moving on. Yeah. yeah, but I, I want people to just think about where you are right now. Are you generating the amount of leads that you're happy with? 
is it just a matter of making a few other tweaks like asking questions having a capture page at the bottom you know asking mm -hmm. people to get on your list or is it that people don't know what your focus is and therefore are confused which is possible got a question from Alan hello Alan, Alan. Turner saying he notices that several of you do not have a date on your blog posts, but many people still do. Is this a personal choice or a specific tactic? And also, what uh, frequency do you post to your blog? What was the last question? Um, he's asking about dates, if it's a tactic not to put dates on a blog post, and he's also asking how often you blog. Okay. Um, it's not, it wasn't a uh, a tactic. It it's the um, it's optimized the press. It's the theme. Optimized press mm. theme doesn't have the date in there, so it does it no. automatically. However, when I when I was on BethUOnline.com, I did take the date off. I can't remember how I did it, but there was something that I did to the script or something, um, which removed it so that when I was repurposing that content, it was always current. It was always evergreen. Um, if it's good content, it doesn't matter. People aren't gonna really frown upon you if they're reading your content and it's like from a year ago if it's still relevant yeah because um, it's like a video a video might have been up for six months and you might have had six or you know six or seven hundred views on it it's it's still relevant people are yeah. still going to go and watch it so yeah. it doesn't really make any difference if it's got the date on or not to be fair but it's all to do with optimized press theme it doesn't show the date yeah and the second question was, how often do I blog? And I, I blog yeah. once a week, if that, sometimes. Sometimes I do four blog posts a month, sometimes I do three. And that doesn't seem like a lot. Um, but like I said at the beginning, it's about being consistent. Um, and you're getting results. And I'm getting results, exactly. So you don't have to flog yourself to get Flog your results. blog. <laughs> flog your blog. Flog your blog. Flog your blog. Yeah, you can blog your blog. Yeah. Any more for any more? Um, no, I can't see anything else. I think, and you have covered a lot tonight. And obviously, you're going to tell people that they can get the recording um, if they're on your list. They can do that. Um, if you want to tell them again, Beth, just how to. I did put it in earlier, but tell them again how to subscribe if they haven't already to get the workbooks you were talking about, because I've looked at them and I've subscribed again. I do want to look again. Uh, I've, my phone's been bleeping. Um, this is the link, so it's uh, simpleblogginnetwork.com forward slash it's dash so dash blogging dash simple. Okay. Or you can go on any of my blog posts and it'll take you to, to the newsletter. Okay. Very congruent. And, yeah, I big words tonight from Beth and Debbie. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like congruency. Yeah, I do as well. And encycl encyclopedia was quite long as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at big words. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> right, I'll come back. I like the word simple blogging network. That was a big long word, didn't it? Yeah. And it's so sim blogging simple. She sort of. Yeah. So yeah. Flogging, blogging, yeah. flogging and blogging. <laughs> Are you back? I'm oh, back. There she is. Yeah, she's still got her pads of ears on. I've got another question. Oh, quick. Okay. Alan Turner's asking, are you guys all full-time and on, online, and how long does it take you to be full-time? Um, I am now part-time. I was full-time, um, and I'm hoping to be full-time very, very soon. It's looking very, very promising. Um, and I started online in 2009, so it has taken a long time, but I have got to a child who takes up a lot of my time. I am a mummy and uh, I, I don't just blog and I don't just uh, do affiliate marketing and online marketing and other things. So uh, everybody's story is different, but yeah, that is my, my, yeah. my journey. I'm a full time teacher and at the moment I'm very part time online but wanting to do a lot more. Um, 
I've been self-employed since I was 21, and I'm now 22, so <laughs> I tell lots of lies. Um, no, I have, I've been self-employed since I was 21, so I've, I've run an offline business, various different things, consultancy, accountancy, sales, all sorts of different things for a long period of time. Um, I have my torture chamber behind me, so currently my offline business is... Um, commercial embroidery. As far as my online business is concerned, I've been online for just over 18 months and uh, so I'm part-time in online and full-time in self-employment so take that as you will. But uh, yeah. yeah and um, last year 2013 we ran our first event which was fantastic and everybody got lots out of it so yeah. um, there's so lots, lots of things different. happening yeah mm, definitely so where you are on your journey you're doing it part time everybody's got different circumstances everybody's got different commitments so if this is your dream if this is your passion then you just have to keep on that journey yeah. and, you know, uh, sure. out and there, that. treat it like a business you have yeah. to treat it you like have a to. business you have to yeah definitely yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone, for attending as well. So, any more questions, Angus? Um, none at the moment. I'm just checking. No, that was the last question. Cool. Right. Well, thank you for hanging out with us all, and um, I shall see you all very soon. Okay. Um, Thanks for having us. Bye bye. Thank you. We'll bye. see you soon. Bye. Bye.